Hi, this is Mike of Nearly Enough Dice, and here we are on the Kerbal Space Program on the launch pad, where I have a particularly aerodynamic beast ready to rock and roll. Uh, this is going to be the beginning of uh, my glorious. Um, uh, that worked. This is going to be the part of a science station that is going to go to the moon and back again. I'm currently checking some RCS ports. I want to make. Actually, don't want RCS ports running on this thing at the minute. And there's another thing I need to do, which is control from here. Okay, so what we have here is a science processing lab with. Um, pretty much as many docking ports as can conceivably fit around uh, one of these things. There we go, just something I needed to test. Um, yeah, this is, I have to say, this is one of the more spacey looking things I've made, just simply because it's got that aesthetic of everything we can jam on the outside of it. So it's got landing legs, and it's got monopropellant tanks, and it's got solar panels, and it's got RCS things, which I may never need. I'm not entirely sure I'm ever going to use. Uh, batteries, and of course, a million docking ports, including this cluster of three here. So basically, it turns out I can't make a thing big enough that will take um, a science lab science lab plus the boosters that would get it from the moon back to Kerbin. I can't put that in orbit all at once. Uh, I, I can't, and especially I can't take the science lab, the boosters that will get it back to the moon, from the moon, plus the transfer stage that will take it from Kerbin orbit to the moon in the first place. I can't get that in, or, in orbit in one go, and so therefore I'm going to do orbital construction. Uh, let's turn things off. Just go Not, um, I can't remember if I've, if I've if you, yeah, I've got, I've got some mods which I haven't had before. Last, I can't remember if I talked about them last episode. Um, so I now have costs which I had before. Um, I've got Kerbal Alarm Clock and I've got Kerbal Engineer. Um, which is why I'm confident that I have enough oomph to get this thing into orbit. So basically I'm going to chuck this thing into orbit. I have some um, people on board and because they are going to go eventually to the moon and back, uh, they should end up with tons of experience. So this is, not only is this going to be a science mission, because I'm taking a science processing lab to the moon, so that I can do lots and lots and lots of science, because so I can have either a rover or Kerbals going around. Um, I'm, I'm, there's a, a rover, a simple science rover, with which got materials bay and goo on it, and it's going to go backwards and forwards, and go to a biome, get goo, and come back. Uh, get And then get the experiments reset by the processing lab. The processing lab can also store infinite numbers of experiments, which is more than even a command module. Uh, specifically, it can, it can store more than one of one experiment, because there are several experiments you can do and get little bits more science each time. So that's what, um, that's what I want to do. And then I want to recover the whole thing to get all the juicy, juicy science. So I'm going to get as much science from the moon as I possibly can. Uh, so there's that, but it's also get Kerbals as much experience as I possibly can. Uh, so I'm just going to run my standard launcher script. And copy circ from A from zero. Uh, okay. I'll set that to zero. I'll disable those RCS ports because I don't want the RCS ports 
on the module itself, on the science module itself, I don't want those to um, be used because that, that just takes up mono propellant. And the Werner engines on the main booster stage provide enough RCS as is. So that should be. Let's turn that off. Go away. Uh, recheck my staging because every time I fiddled with this, I had to recheck the staging. Uh, oh, actually, mm, now I'm just, just going to right-click when I get up there. Actually, is what I'm going to do. Um, had a bit of a time getting this working. And we are off. Yeah, now the launcher script does take... This is with the, the big mainsail engine, which is, I think, the biggest engine you get. Uh, even with that, it can take a while. Um, let's load up the Kimbo Engineer. Uh, off surface, put on orbital. So it's got a ton of delta V, probably more than it actually needs. Uh, I tend to to overdo these things. It's not like it's real money. Um, so even though it seems to be uh, somewhat slow, it is in fact. Um, moving pretty well. Well, it's moving well enough, that's what it's doing. The time warp up to nothing interesting should happen until about ten K. Fast forward to that. That's all working nicely, even though it's a great, it's a great big, huge, kind of cumbersome thing. Um, and it, it, is, it still moves reasonably well. Again, I mean, those Werner engines, I was, I was worried about those engines on the grounds that they might use up a lot of fuel, but that really doesn't seem to be an issue. not launching as well as the last time I ran this. But the f is still going up. Um, time to f is still going up. So I may only have just enough oomph to get off the ground. But I've got enough oomph to get off the ground. That's the main thing. I am very lucky they don't use a more realistic um, aerodynamic model. Well, uh, and also it's a good thing I'm not using like far or near or um, you know a more accurate. Uh, there we go. So we'll turn SAS on, and then we will run. We need to get rid of a lot of the, a lot of that that the kind of gump that that comes up is stuff that is there when I was debugging it. Then I can really do with um, fixing it. Quite frankly, I don't, I don't need.
don't need that anymore. Well, here we are in space. go to the maneuver node. Uh, it'll take a bit of a long way around because it often seems to do that. But it should get there. I'd have that double the, the um, delta V action you need. So that's fine. So, because I still don't have a maneuver following node that I like, a uh, maneuver following cost script that I like, I'm just going to do it manually. Um, one of these days I'm going to have to fix that and get one that I actually do like. Uh, we're just counting down until we get to the storm. Okay. Just complete the burn on low power. And that's what we will do. Unlock steering. Actually, we'll point to prograde. And this is something I've forgotten to do in pretty much all the. I've had a few goes at this, and it's all gone horribly wrong for various complicated reasons. Um, and one of them has always been forgetting to turn that off. To turn my turn my panels on. Um why oh my why is why am I why are my ladders extended? Can I can I unextend those ladders? It doesn't matter. But the ladders are extended for some strange reason. Retract ladder. Again, it's possible the ladders are part of the, the, the panels group. Okay. Since we have trouble getting to progress.
Unlock Ah, oh, I didn't spell steering right. Unlock staring. Staring is on. Annoyingly, it just kind of went, yeah, right. Uh, this is because um, you can unlock, you can lock and unlock any variable you like. Um, so it didn't particularly care that there was there wasn't actually a steering variable to, to or a staring variable. Right, I think I'll. That's it calmed down a little bit. Now this is the bit that I hope works, because I had a lot of it I had a lot of trouble with this. Um, to do with making sure the docking ports were where I thought they were. And that has worked, it's got it's got a docking port. I would actually very often end up with it not having a docking port. Um, so that's now completely uncontrolled. Um, because you can't actually do control from one of these things. But it does have electric charge and... Well, it's got electric charge, so the lights are on and the Wi-Fi is working and what more could you want, quite frankly? So... Theoretically, I could have set up this booster section um, to deorbit. No, I'm, I'm, it's going to deorbit because I'm about to deorbit it. Um, but I could have put parachutes on it. <laughs> but oh my lord, I've had so much trouble trying to get this thing to work and trying to get that module to end up where it is in the condition that it's currently in. Um, that I'm, I'm just going to go with this. I'm just going to be happy with it. Um, I've got a lot of Delta V left. I, I mean, there's all sorts of things I could theoretically do, like, like land it. <laughs> I was really feeling mad. But I'm just going to deorbit it to get it out of the way, and it's going to fall to the ground and just explode and die. Well, I mean... Hopefully it'll burn. I mean, it should burn up in the atmosphere. It's what it should actually do. Um, so I'm just going to let it um, point prograde. Uh, no, retrograde. Sorry. I know my grades. Honest. I've been playing this game a little bit. No, what I'm talking about. Um, going to run out of power. It's going to burn until I run out of power, which I've now done. And that's going to fall. I suppose I should have been, um, yeah, because that might just crash as opposed to. Yeah. <laughs> I should care, but I don't. Um, and it has, has my station. Oh no, I've lost my station. It's mildly irritating. But yay, this is. I finally got this working, so I'm very happy. Uh, so we're going to go to the space center. Gonna, I'm just going to have a quick tour of my science station now that it's kind of floating uh, in the void and hopefully it's not gone into the darkness just yet and I think it has what I want. There we go. Yeah, so the main docking ports, the main... Also, did I put the lights on? I can't remember. Can I put the lights on? Probably can't change anything at the minute. Uh, because you, you, you just can't control anything. Uh, I might be able to EVA. I don't think I can even EVA. No, I can EVA. Let's not do that. Because just in case. Um, the main things that I've got this this triple docking port at the back is is for the transfer station, which is going to be a big you know, fuel tank rocket. 
and I want a very big solid connection. So I've got this triple. So this is a triple adapter attached to uh, a decoupler because eventually I'm not going to want it. Um, so that's just going to. I want the the triple the triple docking port here, so I get a really solid connection. Uh, because if you just have a, a, a single docking port, you can end up with a lot of wobble, is my understanding. It's not. Um, I'm, I'm new to constructing things with, with docking ports, I, I must admit. The, now, this, this set here, these are where the boosters that should be taking the thing to and from moon orbit live, or will live. And I have made a sub-assembly in the vehicle assembly bay, which is these two girders and these two docking ports. And the reason I did that is because that way I should now have a known sub-assembly. I can bolt onto anything and they should then all fit together. I shouldn't have to you know, fiddle very, very carefully to make sure that the, the docking ports fit up together. All I need to do, if I want to put something that connects here, all I should need to do is slap those, slap that sub-assembly on the side of it, and it should, you know, well, I say it should line up nicely. Uh, the docking ports will be the same distance apart. It is going to be an interesting question as to whether or not I can actually bring up some boosters and whether they will nicely click on to those two ports. That is going to be an interesting question. Uh, a single port for the command module, which I think is going to have to be the next thing that comes up. So that I then have control over this thing and I can because I might want to fold these panels out the way before I do any docking. I certainly probably dock the boosters if they because it looks like they, they can be in the way and I'm not going to be able to unfold them until I get a command module up here. Um, so I suspect command module first then the booster stage here or the, the, the transfer stage. And then the the boosters that are going to go on the sides um, here and uh, here and here. But as we pass into the night and it turns on, I have left the lights on, which is good of me. Um, and it looks like we're going to have, looks like we're going to have enough electric charge to get through the night. Uh, I thought the illuminators were a good idea, especially on the side with the docking port. So when I try and dock my my boosters, I can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, there you go. So, a relatively short episode, and I'm going to start docking things next episode, and so I'm going to try and eliminate as much of the exciting and fun um switch to yeah let's go let's go watch this as much fun as it is to watch me fiddle with my um auto mechanics to catch up with things or to to you know you speed up a bit and you slow down um yeah that's extra fun so <laughs> I might do my best to eliminate as much of that. To be perfectly honest, lining things up for docking is going to be entertaining enough. So uh, that is going to be the next step. So it's going to be you know, making sure that the vehicles actually have the right kind of docking thing and also um, fit together. And then I'll see because I don't I don't know if those if that dual um, port thing I don't if I don't even know if that's going to work. You know, that might, that may simply just not work. Oh, I've not put an engineering module on this. I've got a cost module on this, I think.
Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, I'm going to crash into the ground. I can't remember. I'm, I can't, I'm trying to remember if I know how to set the. to, to work out the vertical speed uh, from there, but I can't remember. So let's, let's not bother. Uh, we're going to smash the ground any moment now. So, uh, I'm at that point, so thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you've been enjoying the video. And you can find us at www.newlandupdice.com, which is our role playing game thing, podcast and blog. And finally, I have been Mike of Nearly Enough Dice, and whatever you do. <laughs> Well, there's still bits left. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, thanks for watching. Until we meet again, reach for the stars.